Hey, Eric. Hey, Chris. Retrograde Amnesia is a member of the Greenlit Podcast Network, a coalition of creator-owned podcasts focused on video gaming, entertainment, and pop culture. Go to greenlitpodcasts.com to find out about all the great shows on the network. Also, Eric, we have a Patreon page. Patreon.com slash RetroAM. Bonus episodes, cool stuff, more. <laughs> yes, lots of good cool stuff. Please go there. Eric, would you like to hear some hot sounds that Chris, I Chris, do you want to hear hot sounds that I recorded? Yes. I didn't. I didn't do it. Somebody else did. Let's play them. Okay. Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia, a comprehensive podcast where we discuss classic JRPGs chapter by chapter, beat by beat. In this series, we are covering Chrono Cross. Tonight, we are going to do a podcast in another life when we are both cats. My name is Chris. I'm joined tonight by Eric. Hey, Eric. Vanilla Sky. Very yeah. nice, sir. How many Vanilla Sky references have we had on this podcast? At least like six, right? Uh, two or three, yeah. I know we did a tech support joke at one point. I don't remember which one it was. We also did the one about swallowing there was a Kurt Russell reference. Oh, I have um, two daughters. I have two daughters and you know that. Yeah. I'm real. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think we've exhausted our uh, quota for that. Also, we are united tonight with The Real Net, a collective of patrons who are listening to us recording live. You two can join us at patreon.com slash retro AM. We are also confederated with The Fake Net, our post-production AI companion who can fit an entire keyboard in her mouth and spit out the keys like teeth. Initializing Fake Net. If that were even possible, I would spit two L's directly into your foreheads to let the world know you're both huge losers. Uh, welcome, FakeNet. Thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate you. Clearly untrue. Hit Chris in the head with that O key. Yeah. Ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eric, we're in the middle of our Zelbus exploits here, and I think we're picking up on our gambling adventure. I think Fargo is in the process, or has or not, Fargo's already swindled our dumbasses, yes. right? Uh huh. In a game, he knew who he'd win, and he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. This man is immune to feeling feelings. I like how this game gives you no direction here. It's just like, well, you've lost your fucking boat and you've got nothing to do. And you just got to kind of wander around until you get some very, very obvious hints. Yes. But do you, this, the Zelbus is full of broken people. Has anyone on here got their shit together? Is I, anyone I, happy uh, to be here who's working here? Does, does Nikki's crew count? Mickey's pretty upset. Yeah, she is pretty upset. But I, she, she feels like she has it together. She has it together, but I don't necessarily get that the magical dreamers are yeah, that's true. They're, in good shape right now if they're slumming it at a slave labor yeah, that's true. carnival cruise. What about the relaxing guy? He's paying to be here. Okay. This is like the relaxer. Like he is, he's here. Like this is a paying customer. I'm okay. saying workforce. Oh, workforce? Yeah, Definitely not. The labor. No, no, it's bad. It's all bad here. So the first thing we have to do is kind of try to kind of figure out how to undo the swindle here. So where'd you go first? Well, whenever I run into a problem in my life, what I wish I could do is just go to sleep. Yeah. So that's what I did in this game. I went to the inn and I wanted to go to sleep. Yes. Go back to nap. Yes. So I get back down here in the inn and the bug guy walks down from a ladder behind the counter. Mm -hmm. He apologizes, (laughs) saying he didn't realize he had a customer. And he asks what he can do for us. A cat walks by and walks up that ladder. The bug guy yells at him not to go up there. The cat comes back down, which is not true to life. Cats don't listen to shit. Yeah. <laughs> so I've heard. <clears throat> Harley and Starkey then know that the casino is right above the inn. Harley thinks something is fishy, and then has a daytime fantasy about always moving around freely, like that of a cat. Ah, yes. The same thing happened with me with Norris. He was like, oh, that's probably the casino up there. If only we can move freely mm-hmm. like a cat. Chris, this means that we have to be turned into a cat, perhaps yes. by the will of a local magician. Yes. Where it, has this happened before? If only that hadn't, hadn't already happened. Yes, we have to go to Sneff's show at the bar. That's right. And hope that he is scheduled to perform his cat trick again. What was the cat trick called again? Cat, cat on, on a hot tin roof. Hot tin roof, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Fecknet, for that uh, explanation last episode, by the way. I can't imagine your compliment was made with sincerity, and I implore you to eat shit. So, man, I went back there and had to watch the whole show again. Yeah, we do. And this time, our boy Jack isn't all... Yeah, he's not there. Yeah, he... But the splendidly grand magic troop plays. But, oh, no, it's different. He asks if he wants to volunteer. And yes. I do. I want to volunteer. Yes, all three of us do. Yes, all three, our entire party. <laughs> he didn't ask for three volunteers last time, but God damn it, Sneff, you're getting three volunteers this time, He friend. doesn't call attention to that, does he? No, I mean, he It's kind of weird that's like, you no. know, you and your, your crew all roll up. He's like, oh, uh, okay, sure. Maybe I mean, like... He doesn't give a fuck. He just rolls with whatever, I think. With what's about to happen, my headcanon is now he overdoes it and exerts all of his power. <laughs> 
He's out of cat changing power after yeah. this. So he asks us up to the stage, then asks if we're ready. Then he says, one, two, three, and we're white, black, and calico cats. Yes. I'm moving around, and I'm a cat. Yes. Sneff asks me, the cat, where I think I'm going. <laughs> Sneff uses a custom animation to pick me up, but he hurts his back, falling over and hitting his goddamn head on the wooden floor. Oh. The scene fades to black while we're still cats. That didn't happen for me. I immediately ran away from him, and he didn't catch me, and I went through the hole So how did in the performer's door. How did Sneff get injured in your game? He told me later that he hurt his back chasing after us, but oh, I, don't think it, I don't think it actually happened on screen for me. I'm going to say there is a 5% chance I made that up, but I'm pretty sure I didn't because I don't lie on this podcast. <laughs> of course not. So then we're back in the storeroom. Sneff is face down, ass up. So are the two pirates and all three of us cats. One of the pirates asks Sneff if he is all right. Another pirate calls him Pops. And to take it easy because we're not getting any younger. And I get the feeling when he calls him Pops that like Sneff is the leader of this yeah. rogue band of uh, rebels. He's their here. Pops, not their dad. Yeah. <laughs> Sneff tells us to shut up with capital letters. And the dude is like, you can't do this with your back out. And then I asked about the cats, and Sneff says an old troll gave him a mysterious berry during his travels long ago. Quote, she was saying something about the bend of time, end quote. After he ate that berry, Sneff was able to transform people into cats. Chris, what's your favorite berry? The Oren berry from Pokemon. In real life, Chris? Uh, <laughs> blueberry. That's fucked up. Yeah. Strawberry is the correct answer there. But. Okay. By the way, I didn't see any of this. Are you serious? No, I got none of this. You've not this happening right now. No, All right. I immediately ran. I got more. I immediately ran to the right and oh, went into the performers room. Yeah, and talked to like Salt and Pepper and the pirates, and they were just like, "Oh, what's going on here?" Sneff wasn't there. All fucked and up. The, no, th- then I looped back around into the bar area, and then Sneff started chasing after me, and I ran out the door. Then, okay. then I didn't have to fuck with Sneff anymore. Well, dude, so I didn't get his backstory here. That that makes me sad. Backstory: Sneff's backstory about his injured back. Ha ha! I get it. Sneff wants to change us back into a human, but his back hurts too bad. Quote, need to lie down a bit, so you'll have to stay that way for a while. I hope you understand. Please yes. understand. A pirate then says, sorry, folks, just hang in there. And they have to go do the magic show to fill in for Sneff. Sneff reiterates that he has to lie down for a bit and will have to play cat and mouse for a while. Mm-hmm. Salt and pepper block the exit. One says he shook what he deserved while the other says, Old Man Sneff would always mockingly mock our comedy act. That is why something awfully awful happened to him. Can we note that Salt and Pepper at this point in time don't know their real names? Yes, this is true. Yet they still talk like that? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I wonder if they can figure... Why do I talk like this guy? Like, if I got a bizarre head injury, I bet I would still reach the same stupid metaphors I use all the time. Yeah, you're probably right. So then I catwalk through the little open door. Mm -hmm. I think this is where Chris and I's paths link back up like Marcus Phoenix. Man, that was nasty. Yes, indeed. I went out here and I'm in the hallway and I met a cat. Oh, yeah? This cat said that they'd show me the ropes. The main one being that the cat's work starts in the kitchen. Mm, that's a hint to go to the kitchen, isn't yes. it, Chris? Mm-hmm. I went back into that performance room, the bar, and a patron is like, whoa, dude, tough break. It sucks that he couldn't turn you back. The bartender won't speak to us, and Jill is also upset that he couldn't turn us back. I sneak under the bar. The bartender apologizes, who is, again, bro of G, and says, don't go anywhere that I wouldn't go. Hmm. Which is our hint to do that. Yes. So where'd you go next? Next, I decided to start with the restaurant. Okie dokie. There was a lady in there that wondered aloud if she was a cat, if she could sneak into Nikki's room, which is an obvious hint of something we should do He'd later. curl up in his lap, Chris. Yes, indeed. She's the one that really wants to get saucy with Nikki. The waitress actually speaks to us and apologizes and says she's busy. Mm-hmm. The green hab dipshit, the guy yeah. who is misogynistic about something, says he can't remember why, but he says he doesn't have any cat food. <laughs> okay, thanks, buddy. Yeah. So then the next I went, is that all for the restaurant? That's all I got for the restaurant. Chris, well, the kitchen says you don't enter, but check it out, dude. There's a little cat door down there by the oh, bottom. Yeah. And shit, yes, we can go through it. Yes, of course we can. So what'd you find in there? A fry pan AG-47? Yes. Which I has s- to be a weapon for one of these fools, doesn't I, it? I think it's for Lena or Matcha. Yeah, Matcha is my guess. Yes. She seems like she fights with a frying pan. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Lena uses utensils as well. So uh, one of those. I think AG-47 is some, has something to do with the uh, silver element on the on the element chart. Big Net, tell me about the periodic table. <laughs> okay. Initializing fake net. The periodic table of elements was, what, 7th grade in the American education system, and you forgot which one AG is. It's Silver Eric. Just listen to Chris next time and don't bother me. You think so, it's like an AK-47 reference, but with silver? Yes, or maybe silver is the 47th element on the periodic table, I'm not really sure. So when you have to kill everybody in the room, except no substitutes, except for the frying pan AG-47. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so Eric, we're not going to talk about what the cook says. 
Why because not? she uses the same type of racial slur that John McCain uses to use. Oh, no, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to say everything but the last word. How okay. About that? Okay. So a demi-human cook is flame frying a pan over the stove. And they say, la, 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 I don't need a recipe book because I'm the happy cook who feeds the people. Yes. Racial slur deleted. Mm-hmm. I think it was probably an accident. They were just looking for a rounding word there. Well, I mean, it wasn't used in the context of being yeah. a racial slur. It was... No, no, it wasn't. You're right. It was used as a uh, synonym, synonym for, for trash. slop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you talk to the cat here? Yes. The cat in here says that they're in charge of the ship. Yes. And gives us the monster mouth frame. They for say, our dialogue boxes. I like you, Meow. Stay as long as you like, Meow. The ship belongs to me, myself, and I, Meow. Let me give you a welcome present, Meow. Did you notice that when they, the cat gave us the frame, it says Surge receives the monster mouth frame? Yeah, I'm constantly concerned. Like, in this game, people address us as Surge sometimes and links, and I don't know if that's just it was on an Excel file and you don't know who's who when, but... I think it makes sense for people to call us Surge in dialogue because we're at that understanding except for Harley who's just like the cat doesn't know I'm Surge right I'm a but cat. I, I think the variable here in the game like the cat's name variable is Surge hmm. even though when you go to the uh, the menu it still says links where'd you go next or did you is this is there anything else in the kitchen for you did you go to Fargo's room yes you go to Fargo's room I think he's in there thinking out loud about something mm-hmm. he's thinking about how he doesn't like how we the party is looking for the sage the threesome yes and also he doesn't like our boat <laughs> the, or yeah. the fact that we landed, on, landed here on a poor boat and then he turns around and kneels down to greet the cats yes he remarks that she sure loved cats yes thinking I'm, of someone else not not us i'm sure he's talking about zelbus here yeah fargo then walks over to that vanity thing and opens it it reveals a giant mirror on the inside quote mm-hmm. i would look into you and say how i pity you mirror for a man does not see you as the mirror that you are did I see you as who you were back then? And is that my true self I see now? What would you think of me if you saw me today aboard this ship, cheating people out of money? Yes. I think, yeah, we, I think he's just trying to explain to himself that he's no longer a man of the sea. Yes. He's doubling down on explaining to himself and telling the player that he wasn't always like this. Mm-hmm. So then we get control back. If we talk to Fargo again, he says that Zelbus' name and then remarks that everything without her is meaningless. Yes. You go to the casino? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Someone says that we as cats could not understand the pleasure of gambling. I, I just, uh, did you, I mean, you're a cat owner. Do you think that cats could understand gambling? Well, that's strange because I'm a human. Yes. And I don't get the pleasure of gambling, whatever. I mean, oh. I've been to Vegas six times and I've spent exactly one penny on gambling. So oh, okay. I don't get it. Mm-hmm. Um, I do enjoy opening loot boxes in, I know I've played a game that has one. I can't <laughs> think of it right now. Do you enjoy the, the process of opening like a pack of baseball cards? Hell yeah. Yeah. Good, that's a good feeling. I got Ozzy Smith on my first pack I ever opened. <laughs> I still get that feeling when I buy Pokemon cards for my kids. I'm like, oh, let's see what we got here, guys. Hold on, wait. Do you, you open them and then distribute them to your children? You don't let them open the package themselves? No, no I open it. No, I, I we, we do it together. Okay. Yeah. You say you're going to take out the, no, no, the no. Electabuzz before they... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I don't do that. So what, what do you want to do next here, Eric? Uh, I went to the top deck and spoke to some people up there next. Yes. There's a lady in a yellow dress who would walk across the rope to Nikki's room. Is that right? Maybe she wishes that. Yes, she says. A lady says, in a yellow yeah. dress wishes she could walk across the top rope to Nikki's room. Hint, hint. Yeah, it's a very obvious hint that we should go do that. As I approach the crow's nest, the game stops and shows the cat that was already up there walking across the top rope. I do this too. Yes, it's I great. Get the magical dreamer's ship. Did you do this too, Chris? Yes, I did. We go into Nikki's room in his. Uh, I, I guess this version of Nikki still also does coke, like the other one, because he's yes. got the same coke table and all. The, all the the entire room is exactly the same as the other one. Similarly furnished. Yes, Irene's is in here, mm-hmm. our mermaid friend, and she has confronted Nikki about something. She's talking about the quote song of the demi humans. Nikki wants to know if it really exists. Yes, he's heard rumors about it, but he's not really sure what if it's real. He asks if it can save Marbule. Irene confirms this, suggesting that the only one who knows its true power is the sage. She tells him Fargo won't return the song or the sage. This is making me extremely curious about the mechanics of of music in this world. Like, why why can a song save a village? Mm -hmm. So there's those chaos ghosts back in Marbule, right? Yeah. They cannot interact with our world. They are beings caught between dimensions. They they refer to them as nightmares. Sure. Nightmares, nightmares. The sonic wave of the voice can perhaps pierce dimensions when sung by a true auteur of vocal technique, such as this demi-human sage, or perhaps the child of humans and demi-humans is also uniquely blessed with this power. Also someone who has the power over everyone in this world to captivate and moisten the genitals of both men and women uh, across 
time, right? S- yeah. So Nikki S- is the ultimate Nikki. sex okay. symbol. Okay. And the ultimate like child of chimera and demi human disasters is uniquely qualified to expel the ghosts with his power of his trans dimensional voice. So I'm assuming this song was written a long time ago in preparation for the time in which the nightmares would come. Well, actually, Chris, it was written in our dimension by Yasunori Mitsuda and yeah. then exported through dimensions, through worlds, into the hands of the sage. Okay, I'll take it. However, so, sage can't sing it, so Nikki has to come in, right? Yeah, exactly. Apparently, the sage is the only one who knows it, but the sage is no longer able to physically sing. Right. Only Nikki can do this shit. Nikki wonders if he'll be able to perform such a song. He can't sing because he's too old and has endured too much labor. Yeah. <laughs> labor will do it to you, man. Yeah, man. So Nikki ultimately agrees to do this because he wants to learn more about this magical song. Irene stops short of telling him he's the chosen one at a certain point. And Nikki says he'll do it, but mostly out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. He then looks at Irene's and says he feels a sense of nostalgia. He asks if they have met somewhere before. Irene's is like, Ja, perhaps we have. Yes. When I speak to Nikki, he says, are you without a family? Oh, then you're just like me. Irene's just asks what he's, what we're doing here. If you speak to her. So again, the game is telegraphing all of this stuff pretty hard. I know that there's much subtlety toward what needs to be done here, but I think it is interesting that I don't think this whole save Marbule thing is necessary for the plot. No, I think you can miss this whole part and yeah. probably miss some other parts yeah. later. The part that we're doing right now, I don't think it's required. Like, right. you can easily miss it if you just go right to where you're supposed to go and you're not a cat. Yes. So, did you do anything else in Nikki's room? That's it. You go to Mickey's room? I didn't. Uh-oh. Well, the dancers confirm their makeup is not up to par down oh, here. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, you're right. And then Mickey is complaining that Nikki still hasn't come up with the script. Mm-hmm. And they're anxious to get some rehearsals done. Womp womp. Womp womp. Womp womp. So I, that's all I did at the Magical Dreamer ship. Then I went back to the crow's nest. Yes. Now it's time for us to go sneak up into the inn and figure out what's going on here. Well, the cat tells me all the demi-humans are defeated except for the one guy who mops the floor. Oh, okay. The sage. Yes. Even though that Irene says labor has destroyed him. He's yes. not defeated yet. He's still got some hope. Yeah. So let me go to the inn. Yeah, let's go sneak into the inn. You sneak under the counter and get up into that secret room. Mm -hmm. The cricket guy has a giant fucking cartoon magnet. Yeah. That he apparently is using to control the game upstairs. What was it called? Sudden death or something of that nature? Yeah, well, the craps gambling gambling table. The camera then pans up and we can see Fargo cheating Sneff. Yes. Sneff is pissed because he wanted to buy some cat food for us. So I really appreciate Sneff. Yeah, thank you for buying the cat food that certainly isn't on board, Sneff. Yes. Fargo uh, also tells Sneff that he has to learn when to quit, which gamblers love hearing. Yeah, of course. Of course they do. Well, when Fargo asked who the cat food was for, Sneff said, none of your beeswax, <laughs> which I can definitely, that is a total Sneff line. Yes. You can see him saying that. Yes. But yeah, the, the cricket guy, the bug guy sees us, but then asks us not to scare him, then goes and walks by a little table with some drinks. Mm-hmm. I take the handle right in front of him and this MF doesn't give a fuck. No, absolutely not. And that's all I did up there. Yep, you have it. It's I think it's I think the handle is a key item now. Yeah, it's like a method of sabotage. It stays in your square button inventory. Yes. It cannot be consumed as an element. So now we can't really confront Fargo until we are turned back into our former selves. Yeah, we're right? cats. No yes. way. Fargo likes cats. He doesn't like us. We we need him to be curious about the party traveling towards him. Let's talk about Fargo. I just thought of something. When he was Musing to himself and called us the threesome. Mm-hmm. And then he turns around and there's three different cats in triangle formation right in his <laughs> his his office yeah. without opening the door. Like yeah. shouldn't if he, if he been you know, he knows Sneff can turn fuckers into cats. Yeah. Fargo's he, not Fargo should have figured this out. I mean, I know he's going through a lot right now, just acknowledging his son for the first time or whatever, yes. but he's he needs to be more attentive. There's a lot happening. Yeah. So you can find Sneff in the performer's room. Mm -hmm. He's been looking for us, obviously, and he thinks he can change us back. Yes, he is not 100% better yet, but he can stand up now. Yes. He does the whole one, two, three song and dance, and we're back to normal. Yes. He Uh, apologizes and asks us to come by again and get what, Chris? A cup of tea. Oh, yes. Thank you, Sneff. He would love to help us out, but due to unforeseen circumstances, he cannot leave the ship. That is, of course, his indentured servitude and his debt to Fargo. So then it's time to go confront Fargo in Fargo's room, right? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's go do it. Go to Fargo's it. room. So we confront him, but when we get there, he's in mid-conversation with Nikki, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Uh, he says he's not going to allow Nikki to access the Grand Slam. I guess Nikki has the same goal as us. Nikki wants to speak with the Sage for the sake of saving Marbule. And we still don't exactly know what the Grand Slam is yet either. It could be the Denny's Breakfast. It could be a baseball diamond. It could be a brawling pit. Who yes, knows? could be anything. I think Fargo's reasoning here is kind of suspect. He, yeah. sa- he says, you don't understand. True beauty is found within a dying entity. Therefore, I will watch over Marbule when its time comes. 
Furthermore, you and I have a contract. For the time being, you are in my possession. What am I supposed to do should anything happen to you? That would be a great financial loss for me. I mean, rock stars ODing all the time. That's why they have insurance, right? That's true. But it's interesting that his, his response is true beauty is found within a dying entity. Like, yeah. What does that fucking mean? Like, does that mean that Fargo takes pleasure in gazing off into a dying town and well, seeing Marbule just being all fucked up? Chris, you know how Mother Teresa didn't necessarily make the best of her resources, but encourage people to find God through suffering? Yeah. There you go. Okay. I think that translates, right? Yeah, I think you're right, actually. So, Like, some people see a ship sinking and think that's beautiful, better than the ship staying afloat. Okay. I guess I'm with you here, Eric. But I mean, I don't believe that. I, I don't either. people get too deep in their own bullshit, you can rationalize whatever you want. Why does Fargo believe that? that that's very interesting to me. Also, it's kind of an interesting contrast that in another world, Nikki is this huge superstar, but here he's a servant to a yeah, cruise ship. It's, right. Even though they're rough times, basically the same guy. They're basically the same guy, and they were also just playing another festival as a hired gig in the other world, too. Yeah. But Nikki is like trying to convince him. He mentions the potential impact. Then he feels objectified, and Fargo does not argue with him. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, well. He's, if that's what you think, so be it. And Nikki turns around and exclamation points pop out of Nikki. Yes. I think it's for us, my band of miscreants. But he notices Fargo's dressing table and notes that it is, it is exactly like his mother's. Mm-hmm. He finds a scratch he made as a child. This is that vanity thing Fargo went yeah. to open up. I guess it's a dressing table. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but. Yes. Nikki suddenly wonders if Fargo is his father, which mm-hmm. is a uh, ding noise. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. that's correct. But Fargo tells Nikki that he is no longer the father he once knew. He lost everything when Zelbus passed away even himself. Nikki confirms what he believes, then asks if Fargo is participating in such a dubious act. Yes. And it's interesting, too, this Fargo tells Nikki that he can laugh or pity him. Mm-hmm. He says, quote, but remember this, Nikki, man is not as strong as you think. And then Nikki sad walks away. He says father with an exclamation point and then leaves. Yeah. This game has like a ton of sad songs. Yes. And in this case, it just goes silent. Yeah. And just lets it be, which I thought was weird because this game has plenty of sad songs to deploy. Violence is also an effective mechanism to convey emotion and atmosphere. Yes, that's true, but not an unearned plot point <laughs> or plot beat. Well, do you think this mo- moment was earned with Nikki coming to this realization and confronting here as soon as he sees a table with a mark he made? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Mm. I mean, we, we do have some context for Nikki and not knowing who his family is if we took the Nikki path in, yeah. in, in another world. This we, is... And we've already heard about Marcy during, during this particular sequence as well. But whereas I think with like the, the dragoons and that whole lineage and, and the family, we're getting some, you get some intimacy with those characters because you see them over and over, over again. You fight them. Uh, you hear about their exploits. But with this whole Zelbus crew situation, there's a lot being thrown at us at once. And it feels kind of rushed. Yeah. Even though I, I know that it's building to a pretty cool moment, I think it's, it, it's a little slow. But at least we have the context of like who Fargo could have been based on what we've seen during the ghost ship sequence in another world. So I like how Fargo possibly here was approaching the closest thing to an emotion he's had in years. Mm-hmm. And then we're here and we're like, what's up? You want to go double or nothing? Yeah, of and course. Like, like he, I can just see him like curling a smile, like immediately trashing his emotions and being like, back in it. Let's do it. Yes. Got to going back to the old me. Of course we have to challenge him. Yeah. He'll meet us down there. Yeah, so we go back to the casino. Also, why am I just now noticing that Radius's character model is holding a cane, but when he runs, he points it straight forward. Like, he just holds it and runs. That's how you use a cane, isn't it? Uh, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting all aerodynamic. So let's go challenge Fargo. He'll meet us down there, and uh, we go in there, and we just basically just own him right yeah he's glad we didn't chicken out and he says he'll go first it doesn't go his way fargo nope. screams what in capital letters and then says impossible mm-hmm. fargo then notices we have the crank yes and says we have quite an interesting item quote so i guess you found me out i lose <laughs> fargo's a man of his word chris what does he give Poor us guy. he gives us access to the grand slam and and our boat back that's right our dumbass boat our dinghy yes got my dinghy dinger ding dong Hello everyone, we're Superhero Stuff You Should Know, and if you think you know about superheroes and comic books, 
Think again. We got romance. We got action. Romance. We got comedy. We got everything you need, man. Come on down to superhero stuff you should know for all your superhero needs. Uh, ro- I, I don't know about this romance. What part are you talking about? We've got all kinds of sketches and then deep dives on top of that. Come on down to superhero stuff you should know. <laughs> all right. So come on down to... Su- Wait, why did I say come on down? To superhero stuff you should know. Part of the Greenlit Podcast Network. <laughs> Need some adventure in your life? What Mad Universe is a podcast about the history of sci-fi, fantasy, and horror, where we delve the depths of pop culture history. Everything's the same politically, but we have ray guns. The the actual motive isn't to explore something that's, quote, scientifically possible or... But neither is Star Wars, and I know there's arguments about that, but I would definitely consider Star Wars science fiction. You haven't read Dune! No, I haven't. You can never be the Kwisatz Haderach. What Mad Universe on the Greenlit Podcast Network. So then did you go right to the Grand Slam? I did. Me too. You go there, it has a different song. Dilemma. Peril. Predicament. Hmm. It's the same song that we heard on the Viper Bluffs. Yeah, it's the panicked, well, that you heard. I didn't go there. Yeah. It's the panicked piano, keys, and flute. So what is the Grand Slam, Chris? The Grand Slam is a Pokemon stadium? It's a mo- damn monster fighting pit in the basement. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, why is this here? But I think the correct answer is so Fargo can make some fucking money. Yeah. 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 It is classic fight pit. Owners and bettors are wildly into the battle between one of these silly lizard men with a funny red hat. Yes. A snin goblin and an angry cat guy, the cat burglar. Yes. One guy loves the ferocious claws and the cry of victory makes him tingle. There's big banners. You see what they say? Yeah, I love them. It says, welcome, Iron Man. Might is right. Fighting spirit. Hell yes. So great. I want a banner that bridges between our two sound deadening yeah. materials that says fighting spirit yes <laughs> did you do any of this stuff i accidentally did one i did one too and i'm like uh i, I got th- smoked to do i think i need to have better monsters to do this if you win three matches you can get janice but i guess we're just gonna have to do that later so i entered the battle arena and the promoter says our slogan fight with might and believe the hype it's time to get it on with capital letters Janice says, don't be taken too lightly. I get to play as the monsters. And then my only note is, LOL, the Komodo dragon I picked has 28 HP and the Biba did 328 damage to him. Yeah, everything that we have sucks. I actually got pretty far, but wound up dying with like two hits left on a wraith. Oh, I died the first round because I was fighting against something pretty strong. Nice. After I lose, Janice laughs and says, see you later, alligator. Yes, of course. And of course, there has to be a recruitable character here because why else would you do this shit? What's interesting with the Grand Slam is this is all optional. I thought I was doing story shit when I was down here. Mm -hmm. I I thought like if I beat somebody, oh, the sage will come out and save me or something like that. But this is, I mean, later you can go get Janice and you can do some interesting stuff with Sprig down here. But this is all optional for now. Yes. The actual thing that we have to do to progress the plot here is to corner the sage as he wanders in and out of the ship. He's going in and out multiple doors. And you kind of have to try to catch him in his tracks as he's moving in and out. He's also got his mop, which I was hoping he would do like the equivalent of gun kata with his mop. <laughs> that would be great. Stuff like that. I don't think he does that though. No, no, he doesn't. So you stalk him for a while, then he stops and asks why you're following him. He's yes. quite busy and doesn't have time for a game of tag. Yes. And he goes, Commander Shepard. Yes. He says, why do you want to go to the Dead Sea? Tell me about the Dead Sea. Why would you want to enter there? And Where is the Dead Sea? <laughs> yes. And then he says... Do you realize humans have stolen our land along with our legendary treasure? Humans will do anything for profit, no matter the cost. Like a Terra Enigma miniseries. Yes, Ding Noise, of course. Yes. <laughs> the sage then states that demi-humans are the proof of that. Demi-humans cling to the mercy of humans every day. And then he asks, how far will we go? Will we go as far as using brute force? And then you get, you get some options. And I actually told him that I would just like to talk through it because I figured that would be the correct answer. But it's not. The the sage counters with, you also need the courage to defeat others to get through life. Do not forget. And then he just fucking turns around and starts mopping in our our faces. Like, I got to get back to my job, guys. Mm -hmm. So in order to progress this, what do you have to do? You have to talk to him and he says, will you go as far as using brute force? And you can pick, of course, or let's talk it over. Didn't you pick, didn't you just pick, let's talk it over? Yeah. So now I can go say it. I can go talk to him again. He repeats the same shit. Exact same shit. Yeah. Let me beat your ass now, please. Yeah. He says, if we wish to avoid conflict, then you need the courage to defeat others in order to get through life. Do not forget. That's right. I come back and it's like, let's go. Yeah. Let's beat him up. Edge of death plays. Brink of death. Sage has different attack patterns depending on the color of the element used against him. Cool. He also has quite a bit of good stuff to trap. When oh, I run, a- I didn't know that. When I run away to save the elements I trapped, because I kept entering and leaving the battle, mm-hmm. he asks me how I will be able to fight if I can't finish battles I start. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty good. 
But I got Thunderstorm, Deluge, and two Carnivore elements. Oh, pretty good. I don't think Very we good. can get Carnivore anytime soon. I don't think that we can get Thunderstorm. We can get Deluge a little bit later. Yeah, Deluge is a good spell. I'll give it to Irene's later. So I smoked this dude, and I felt bad that yeah. I embarrassed the, the labored tire. Like, the savior of Marbule, I just beat the crap out of. The only thing interesting about him is that he's got the combo of, like, turn black, then use white on you. Mm-hmm. But he did the links the first time, and I was like, you dumbass. Idiot. <laughs> Some sage you are. I did notice later in the game that if somebody uses turn color on a character that's the same color, then when you look at that character's innate element in the battle screen, it has it listed twice. Oh, well, okay. I don't know if that creates a 4x damage rather than 2x damage or whatever. Or I don't know if it's 2x, but... Oh, uh, gosh. I don't know how math works, and I still haven't bothered to convert the entire field to one color. So Okay, so, well, here, here you go. So, yes, we get a star, and now it's time to... Uh, oh, actually, we don't get any victory music either. No. Which is weird. And we get a well, mithril it, It's helm. not a victory, Chris. We just we had to do what needed to be done. I take no pleasure in beating up the sage. Yes. <laughs> yes. And after we beat him, this, this sage, like Radius before him, seems to have been convinced through battle that, <laughs> that he should join our side. Things were quite serious about entering the Dead Sea. Quote, could it be that you are carrying the burden of fate for the human race? No. For all life forms. Quite a good guess, sir. Yes, heck of a statement there, buddy. Sage joins our party. Just kidding. No. Just kidding. He doesn't. <laughs> and of all the characters to not join our party, why can't the sage join our party? He's got a mop. That would be yeah, hilarious. But he's already been labeled as, quote, old and fucked up. That's yeah. what she said, right? That's true. Yeah. True. Then it he- is weird, though, that he's not on our Like, I wonder why that happened. Yeah. Then he gives us something. Yeah. But it comes with a warning. Mm-hmm. It says, he says, opening a new gate also brings a new misfortune. Do not forget. And then Lynx receives the Fiddler Crab. Hell yeah. And he says to use that near the Dead Sea. You think... Where the tides are When different. you see Fiddler Crab, do you think it is literally a Fiddler Crab that he just mopped up? That he just imbued with his power? I have no idea. I forgot to check it in the inventory screen in, in the menu to see, see what, what it says. says. Yeah. But I'm picturing it as like a small trinket of a crab playing a Fiddler. Or a Fiddle, excuse me. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. So, it's not course. a Fiddler Crab. It's a Blue Crab. Initializing Fake the Fiddler Crab is a beautiful sculpture with a claw that shines like a blue jewel. So then, like he does, Nikki comes out of nowhere. Yes. Where he's relieved to find the sage here. He begs the sage to teach him the legendary song of Marbule. Yes. The sage responds by asking why humans have to be so selfish. And I wonder if he's going to fight Nikki now. <laughs> yeah. He says, that song only has a place in the hearts of demi-humans. Why should I teach you the song? Nikki tells him that Irene's asked. Sage is impressed that Irene's has not given up. Nikki is like, that's not it at all. I have a great interest in this song. A beautiful song originating from a beautiful island. Nikki isn't 100% sure he can pull it off, but if it means he can save someone through his song. Sage interrupts to say there is just once a man like him. Nikki's like, who is that? And the sage reveals that it is, of course, Chris. It's Fargo, of course. The sage once had high hopes for Fargo. They could one day tear down the walls between demi-humans and humans. Now the walls seem even higher. Sage is also amused that as Fargo's son, history seems to be repeating himself Mm -hmm. with Nikki. Yes. Nikki's like, stop talking shit about my dad. Yeah. Referencing the pain and suffering that Fargo goes through. Yeah. He he still says that that his old man's true self is within there. Like he's doing the Luke Skywalker thing. Yeah. And Nikki can, quote, hear his screams of despair, which no one can else can hear or wants to hear. He screams in sorrow alone, Chris, with his deep, dark self. Which, why, why? Why can why can Nikki hear that? Like he's just because uh, Nick because Nikki has the his... sonic ability. He has the voice. He oh, must have the hearing as well. He's the chosen one. Yes, Got his it. senses are like like four hundred percent. Okay, he's like all all good musicians are have superpowers that you don't know about. That's why they're good musicians. Right? Okay, got it. So that's it. Definitely, the sage has got to go mop while he hums a song. Mm-hmm. So then, before Nikki runs dun, off to dun, go dun. listen, yes, before Nikki runs off to go listen, he invites us to his ship later. Yeah. Nikki, yeah, he chases after him, which I think that's a clever way of like the sage going, no, no way. And then going, yeah. what little son? What if you hear me while I mop? Mm-hmm. It's a nice little touch. Mm-hmm. Quite good. So where'd you go next? Casino. Yes, me too. I went to the casino. Sneff is now, of course, on a winning streak. He's on a heater. He says, yeah, 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 jackpots galore, baby. Somebody wonders what's up with the old man Sneff here. He's been on a winning streak since that captain lost. Yes, now he can pay off that dirty captain is what he says. He resolves to pay it and get the hell off this ship. Yes. So now that that, I mean, I like to think Sneff won all this stuff in the last 10 minutes while we beat the crap out of the only good worker here. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Of course. So let me go back to backstage. Yep, back to backstage, yes. Mm -hmm. The The music stops once we get back there, and the performers have heard that Sneff has paid off his debt to Fargo. 
Salt and or Pepor says that it was three years ago that Sneff shook them in after he found them wandering around with amnesia. Retrograde amnesia. Yes. Eric, did you think that the characters that were going to have retrograde amnesia in this in this series that we're doing were going to be the fucking joke characters? It, the, the Spice Boys? It yes. had to be. There was no other path. Yes. I could see it through fate, Chris. They are, of course, greatly grateful to mm-hmm. Sneff. Sneff is talking about leaving, by the way. Yes. And they still have ways to go with their act. But one day he, they say, quote, we will really, truly make you laugh. Sneff tells Lank and Stout, which are their, their names now, yes. that if he runs into any of their comrades, he will tell them that they're doing well. Sniff, I got news for you. They're all dead. They're all dead. Sorry. I do wonder what happens if we bring Sniff with us during a scene later. I checked. <laughs> Probably nothing. I checked. There's, there's nothing. All right. Uh, he then fat shames the pirate <laughs> before he turns to leave, but he suddenly has a change of heart and he does not want to leave these poor sacks of shit behind. Yeah. Like he like makes a big deal about walking away, but then he takes three steps and says he can't leave his family. Yes. But he will be traveling around with these people, which is us from time to time. Mm-hmm. And I say to that, no, sir, you will not. <laughs> Sneff joins your party. Victory music. Yes. Sneff. Hey, Sneff. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Sneff is a aged illusionist. <laughs> so am I. Yeah. Is, if I get a business card, it's going to say that from now on. <laughs> His age is 53. His origin is unknown from the home world. His height is 5'6". His weight is 139 pounds. His build is ordinary. He is right-handed. His Japanese name is also Sneff. His innate element is yellow. His weapon is shot. Which I guess it means he throws shit at people. Yeah, he's like Harley. Yeah. And his accent is, of course, casual English, but his lisp causes him to use FF instead of both F or TH. Also says Nuff a lot. Sneff's fortune. The fortune teller says, You shall once again open your wings in the free world, says the fortune. Sure. I mean, he's a free man now. He is, yeah. He's World's not free. World's in prison, man. Of course, man, dude. So, Chris, what victory music do we just listen to through that one? Uh, Persona 5. Yeah. Now we can go talk to Nikki. Yeah. Um, also, this is where I realized you could get Janice, who I had no memory of, and I strongly suspected Mandela effect. Oh, yeah, of course. Did you get Janice the first time you played this game? I don't think so. I don't think so either. It seems relatively impossible. So yeah, now we can go start the optional save Marbule quest. Yes, the first part of it. We can go talk to Nikki. And he we can has, we can legitimately go. We can climb it, climb it like humans. Yes, we can grab that, that lift that he has over to his ship. Yeah, the lookout says Nikki told him all about us and says it's cool if we use his elevator. Yes, I go to see Nikki and his room's empty. Of course, uh, but you have <laughs> I to was like, in, oh no, he's gone off on another one. Uh, you have to go down to his, the dressing room, and when yes. you go in there, he, Nikki says, "Rockin." Everybody's knew, here. The sage is here, and Irene's is here. Yes, Rockin. I knew you'd come. Nikki is going to save an island with a song. How would you like, how would you all like to save an island with a song? Yes, of course. Can you imagine hearing this shit from Nikki right now? Like, dude, we didn't even do a performance here, man. What are you talking about? What is, what is even going on here? Put away the blow. Can you imagine the perspective, the perspective of like Norris or Starkey or anybody who recently joined us? Like what, what do you guys even get yourselves into? Oh, the the perspective of the space alien with the laser gun? Well, yeah, I mean, I know, but he's like, well, you, I just, like when Nikki says this, I just imagine the weird ass rock star bullshit and what their handlers have to constantly convince them they can't do. Yeah, (laughs) that's true. Save an island with a song, Nikki. He wants a he no. wants a jar of uh, a peanut M and M's, but only blue ones or whatever. Yeah, the Van Halen. Yeah. yeah, right. So apparently, the only weakness of the monster in Marble is the song the Sage knows. I still don't understand any of this, but Nikki is going to play his gig near the island, and we're going to kill the monsters. Apparently, Mickey tells him to think before he speaks. "Quote: You got to be out of your mind." <laughs> we can then agree. Yeah, of course, we say of course. I say of course. Yes. Rockin. Irene declares that she is going to gather the other demi-humans for backup instruments. Also, when you play as Irene, have you played as her yet? Not yet, no. She plays a harp. Ah, cool. So she is also a musician. Yeah. It would be difficult for humans to play proper notes with their songs, which is why they need demi-humans. Yes. Tensions arise when Mickey remembers they have to bring their ship to Marbule, and it's currently chained to and under contract of the Zelbus with Fargo. Mm-hmm. Nikki's plan is to let Irene convince his father, I mean Fargo, to bring the whole goddamn Zelbus along for an audience. Yes. Mickey regards this as a test to see how far they can take their show. Mm-hmm. Nikki then thanks Sage, who is now capitalized, for his support. The Sage trusts that Nikki will put on a good gig. And so is the so, so so the result here is they have to find somebody who can convince Fargo to allow them to do this, right? Yeah, there's big time up at show energy to this. Yeah, yeah, that is true. As we try to leave, Irene pulls our party aside and says yes. we're involved in quite a few tasks here. Yes, we are. Thank you. She offers what, Chris? What else would somebody offer in this game? To join our party yes. and help support us. Irene joins the party with umlauts, I think, in there yes. somewhere. 
Victory Music. Victory Music. Irene's occupation here is uh, weird. It says late Zelvis's sister, which is, that's weird for that to be your profile. I mean, Irene's is her own person too, right? Her age is 16, which is a little bit younger than I thought. Her origin... Irene's is 16? Yes, Irene's is 16. I thought she was like 36. Yeah, me too. Her origin is the ocean. Her height is 5'10". Her weight is 115 pounds. Her build is mermaid. She is right-handed. No change for her Japanese name. Her element is blue. Her weapon is a pick for a harp. So I guess that's the same thing that you would use for Nikki in his guitar, right? Yeah, pick. Her accent is Norwegian, question mark. We're, we're assuming that because there's two umlauts over vowels, and she uses D instead of TH, among other small changes. Her idle animation is to sit down on her fin. Her fortune is, when you can resolve your inner struggle, a new hope will be born. Which, sure, thanks, I guess. That's pretty generic advice, Chris. Yeah, it is. These fortunes are getting quite generic, so I'm glad that we didn't spend too much effort in getting them. Oh, Chris, one more question. Yes. What music was that? Uh, the Mario Kart. Is that a victory music? Yeah. Okay, maybe. I'll figure it out. I don't know. Uh, I can say something different. Fagnet, what music was that? Initializing Fagnet. Chris the liar was not lying. It was the results music from Mario Kart 64. So, Eric, uh, we, so we have to bring somebody to convince Fargo to initiate the rest of the side quest later. Yeah, Irene says someone has to convince Fargo. I wonder who that's going to be. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be Fargo. <laughs> I mean, obviously, because he was staring in the mirror, wondering what he would, what his old self would think about him. Yeah. So uh, I think we kind of know a physical manifestation of his old self. That would be Fargo. So uh, stay tuned. Did you talk to the guy in the back of the ship? Oh, yeah, he reminds us about the Fiddler Crab, right? Well, that and he tells us the stage where they practice on is somewhere on the ship, and Nikki doesn't like to have visitors during rehearsals. Yeah. So Nikki's apparently already getting to work on this, totally disregarding whatever performance they had for the Zelbus. Yes. Well, as their resident band, mm -hmm. Dr. Teeth. Eric, let's consult the Real Net. Let's do it, Chris. Initializing Real Net. Hello, Real Net. Good evening tonight. I don't know if this is a reference to, but I'm going to read it just in case I, uh, I miss something. SSD Ninja says, okay, there was this one weapon and I can't remember what it's from. It may not exist. It was a large marble and it split in two halves, the laser between the two halves. And you could like face the two halves of the sphere and the laser would rainbow out. Does this exist? I thought it was in a cyberpunk kind of movie, but I don't know. Is this a Scientology ship? Blueberry, best berry. Sea Org. I have an image in my head of someone separating a sphere and pulling it out like the Matrix of Leadership and then shooting something out of it but i don't know oh man uh yeah i'm sorry dude you're fucked unless fake net can figure it out later lol no uh, anana more says lol salt and pepper's traits are ingrained yeah i mean even if you get amnesia i've always you're still a goofy asshole yeah like <laughs> if your your base instincts still shine through like you don't suddenly like i don't suddenly become like a wildly articulate person in real life capable of making good decisions right like i'm still going to be yeah the same basic person initializing fake net no you fools, they said ingrained. In. Grained. Like grains of salt. It's a pun. SSD Ninja says they're the Miang of Chrono Cross collectively. I'm just stretching Xenogears references to stay relevant. Yeah. Vot W says, yes, AG is silver. Ding noise, got that right. Okay, With the cool. frying pan, thank yeah. you. Although, I gotta say, the fake net will not enjoy being corrected. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, true. Oh. Don't care, actually. You don't know me. Vat W says... Everyone knows cruise ships are the pinnacle of entertainment, especially now. Haha, uh -huh, no. Yeah. Mm. See last episode. I think we talked <laughs> about that extensively. Anonymous says Radius is trying to fool y'all in reference to the, to, to the cane. I mean, maybe it's like, so here's the thing, Chris. I run quite a bit, right? And I go fucking hard for like the last quarter mile. But when I stop, I'm like Yoda when he picks back up the cane after fighting. Where it, So you, I, you can exert yourself. Uncle Scrooge is also has a cave. Uncle Scrooge. It's, Uncle it's Scrooge. a pogo skick. Yeah, but he carries around a cane, but he doesn't actually need the cane. He's still pretty athletic. Yeah, I don't know. I like to see... There's guys around my neighborhood who walk with beat sticks for dogs, so oh, I assume... Well, oh, that, what? You don't see that? You don't, you don't see men walking with golf clubs by themselves? It, <sighs> it's the beat-up dogs. Okay. I'm not going to I'm not gonna pursue this any further. <laughs> I just don't want this to. This is real. Okay. I've this, seen it in every neighborhood I've lived in in my entire life. This is reality. Men walking with big sticks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to hit dogs with. Or like... Not like beat, but like shoo them away and like act intimidating, that kind of thing. Alter Impulse says, <laughs> you make a monster team by using Sprig. Have Sprig do her technique to get airframe and Cybot. That's our... Uh, well, that you can also get like a forget-me-not pot and trap them or something like that, but it's Pokeball. not until... Yeah. Chris, how do you feel about monster capturing in games that aren't Pokemon or Persona? 
Like Final Fantasy X had that sword where you would capture souls of monsters, so you oversold. I them mean, Dragon Quest has had that too in a while, yeah. for a while, uh, or at least some of them do. DQ Five. I think it's fine. I yeah. watched the the Dragon Quest Five movie recently. It's very bad. Yeah, uh, but my kids liked it because it has a lot of cool action sequences. You, you could probably get away with playing Dragon Quest Ten in front of them. Oh, for sure. Although <laughs> Yakuza Seven arrived today, so congratulations, Chris. Uh, so anyway. Chris is going to play Yakuza game that I haven't played yet. How's that? Yeah, it's first time for everything. Wanye says Sneff is big small dick energy. Who does? Sneff. Yeah, oh no, I agree. Okay, <laughs> yeah. just checking because I know you've got some Sneff takes. Yeah. Okay. Confidence. Oh yeah, here's an obvious uh, oversight bias. Statler and Waldorf greater than everyone. Says SSD, SSD Ninja. But there, I mean, there's a, there's a level of pretension to Statler and Waldorf that I can't completely jive with because they're not better than anyone, but they act like it. Like they offer nothing. They are parasitic. What's the uh, what's the dragon guy's name? He's got the frilly dra- He's blue. He's got the frilly dragon. Oh, oh, he's uh, got a name. I know. Yeah. It, it's like oh, and fake net. What's his name? Initializing fake net. That would be Uncle Deadly. Yes, his name is Uncle Deadly. Okay, thanks. What about him? He's he's often cast in a villainous role. I just right? like him. I I, yeah. I just like his design. Stay tuned for the outtakes. This episode is a production of Retrograde Amnesia, recorded on November eleventh, twenty twenty. Thank you, Mark, Shepherd. for the intro track. You're welcome, Chris. Find us on Twitter at Retro Ninja Pod. Subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you get your podcast. And more importantly, tell a friend about the podcast if they might like it. Email us at retrogradeamnesiapodcast at gmail.com. And if you like us, please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash retroam. Get early access, bonus episodes, mini series, and access to the real net. Until next time, Eric. Yes, we will kill God. And now, I will go back to sleep in another life when we are both cats. Abrella Sohos. Okay, I got I'm Tiffany say... a plasma ball for her birthday. A what? Oh, like the Iranians? I mean, the uh, Saudis have? Like the... <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, dude, that science thing with the pink lightning that comes out of it that you touch. <laughs> no, there's just some more talk about SSD Ninja's fucking orb fantasy or whatever. I'm not really sure what to, what to do with that. I apologize. <laughs> the orb fantasy. <laughs> Thanks, Real Net, for joining us tonight. We're going to record another episode for those that are new, n- new to this process, so we'll be recording another one in a second. Uh, also, thank you for joining if it's your first time. Also, the fake net's not real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We apologize in advance or in in post. It's in the name. (laughs) Okay. uh, I got to read the outro here. The cat, the cat. Also, it's kind of an interesting contract. Mm. Uh, uh, We listened to. You just heard it, Chris. Come on. What uh, music was it? We listened to the uh, uh, Persona 5. Okay. Yeah. Uh, So, uh, (laughs) you know, I said that. Oh, he's, Chris is staring at a Joker amiibo. <laughs> yeah. He's doing the Kaiser Soze thing. Yeah. Yes. Dr. Teeth is the best Muppet, by the way. Um, he's top five. I'll give you that. I mean, Dr. Dr. Teeth, Rolf are top two. I, I, I'd have to think about the others. I like Pepe Prawn. I liked uh, Crazy Harry. Yeah. Pepe I like Swedish Chef good. a whole lot. I love Beaker. Beaker's probably my number one. Yeah, Beaker's pretty good. Swedish Beaker Chef is, is good. just like an example of the human condition in the world of 2020. <laughs> yes. The new Muppet show that they put on Disney Plus is not very good, except for the Swedish chef segments where he is a participant in a cooking show and he fucking sucks. <laughs> so it's pretty good. The show is almost over, but before we go, here is a supercut of every time someone inhaled on Mike. <laughs>